Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Highway to Hell. And so we had to catch up on a lot of stuff, but thankfully, uh, Ed Breeson had issues five, six, and seven of Ghost Rider all be one story. So this is all a three-part story called Heart of Darkness 2, which as you guys know, there was a Heart of Darkness 1, and then there was technically a sequel to it called Dark Design. Um, but I think Ed Breeson was just like, hey, we're, we're going to follow up with Heart of Darkness because this story involves... You know, Wolverine, Punisher, uh, you know, Danny Ketch, obviously, who's in a new form now. He's now the spirit of corruption. He's not the, you know, spirit of vengeance Ghost Rider anymore um, because he was thrown off a bridge by his brother Johnny and he was depowered. So he had to get sent to limbo by the caretaker. And that's where he met Belasco, who then gifted him the power of the spirit of corruption. And this all seems to be part of some big plan because there's a big war coming because, <laughs> you know, there's not enough of those in the Marvel Universe. There's a Kree Scroll Empire story going on right now. Then there's going to be a story called the Ten of Swords with Apocalypse. Then we have the King in Black coming up with uh, with Null and the army of symbiotes that he's going to, you know, lead and stuff. So it just seems like there's, it's just never ending. Poor, the, you know, I feel... Bad for the, the human citizens of the world in the Marvel Universe. <laughs> um, so, yeah. So, this is building up to some big story where I guess, you know, there's going to be a big fight for the throne of hell. But also something else they tease in this. Uh, where Lilith, who's this being who was like the first, uh, you know, with Adam and Eve. And before Eve, there was Lilith. And she was like a, you know, demon vampire type creature thing that wasn't exactly human like Adam was uh, because, you know, she, Adam was created and Lilith created independently of each other. So when that failed and Lilith, you know, turned out to be evil and, uh, you know, God, I guess, then decided to take a part of Adam and create Eve. So I like that they're dealing with, you know, um, religion in this in, in such a direct way because I feel like you don't really see a lot of this stuff in mainstream comic books, but it is something that makes sense to have in Ghost Rider, and I'm glad Ed Breeson is tackling that stuff, because for me, I grew up Catholic, I find that stuff interesting. I think it's really neat, and even though I'm not a devout Catholic now and I don't go to church, I still always love the stories that I've read, the morality stories that were in the Bible and all these other things, like you know, people having hard times you know, in the Bible and how they justify that through the eyes of you know, man's translation of the Word of God and stuff. So I don't know. I've always been into that kind of stuff. That's why I like the show Supernatural, you know, Danny Ketch and Johnny Blaze, you know, going around killing demons together. That's pretty much like Sam and Dean Winchester. Um, so this book, you know, Ed Breeson taken on it, it's been fun, but I, I did have a, a couple criticisms of Mother of Demons, which was the story that took place between this, because if you read issue four and then dive into issue five here, you feel like you missed a little bit. And that shouldn't happen when you're reading a single issue book, like a single story book. Um, you know, if you get a one off like Mother of Demons, that should, you know, be supplemental material. It shouldn't have something, you know, important kind of that happens in it that helps tell this story to an extent. Um, you got you got to straddle that line a little better. So I didn't feel like Ed Breeson did because in Mother of Demons, that's when, you know, issue four had Danny get stuck in the world of Limbo with Belasco, the guy who runs Limbo. And he was given the power by Belasco. Danny Ketch is now the spirit of corruption. So he's like this green knight with a sword that longs for, uh, you know, corrupted spirits and corrupted souls. So, uh, so that's what happens when you stab someone who's corrupted. Uh, the sword will, will kill them and drain all their, or at least it'll drain all the corruption out of them, I guess is basically what the sword does. But it's a good weapon to fight against a spirit of vengeance because it can weaken or depower or, you know, bring clarity, I guess, um, to the actions of a spirit of vengeance or a ghost rider. So that's what Danny's hoping to do is bring clarity to what ha is happening to Johnny. He knows Johnny has lost his way. So that's where we ended issue four. Issue five picks up and Dan's on earth at, at the, the gravesite of his mother, you know, um, Francis, I believe her name is. And that's his mother and Johnny's mother. And he's like, Mom, I, you know, I can't find Johnny. He, I don't know what's going on with him. You're like, how did he get back to Earth? Well, if you read Mother of Demons, you find out how he gets sent back to Earth by Belasco in that issue. So, again, I feel like that shouldn't have happened in that one shot. It should have happened in a single issue here. Uh, but uh, I will say for pacing-wise for these three issues, though, it is good. So, uh, you know, my criticism of Mother of Demons aside, make sure you go buy that book if you want the full story. And I'm sure when they put this in trade, they'll squeeze that in the proper place where it goes for sure. Um, but this sequel, quote unquote, to uh, Heart of Darkness is pretty neat. So as we know from previous issues, Johnny Blaze has been going around killing demons. Some of them are in human form. So Punisher shows up to this crime scene in this one with Wolverine. 
and uh, and there's like you know Punisher's there trying to find out why this cop that he knew died, and uh, you know and so he's like trying to investigate that. Well, of course that cop was a demon, but you know Punisher doesn't know that. He just knows that someone a Ghost Rider showed up and burned the place down and killed demons. So Wolverine shows up and says, "Yeah, I I came here." because I wanted to make sure this wasn't a mutant that did this. Uh, and so that's why I was sent in. And Punisher's like, yeah, it wasn't a mutant. And Wolverine's like, yeah, I know, I can smell. He's like, you know, the, it was a ghost rider. And he goes, and I've known Danny Ketch. So according to these guys, they really only interacted a ton with Danny Ketch as a ghost rider. So they're like, yeah, I know Danny Ketch. Like, and he's a good kid. He's never killed innocent people before. So we got to go find him and figure out what's going on here. And so, but I love there's a line where, where Punisher says something, clearly like a dig at uh, Jonathan Hickman a little bit, maybe a friendly dig, but he says something like Punisher says to Wolverine, he's like, what are you doing here? Shouldn't you be having orgies over on your island of mutants? And I love that because that's one of my criticisms of what Jonathan Hickman's doing is he's making these, this like push for sexuality and stuff. Uh, you know, it's like Wolverine's always had a thing for Jean and there's always been like a, a love triangle between her, Jean and, you know, him, Jean and Scott. Uh, but now in the comics, I guess the three of them just sleep together. And I don't really enjoy that too much. Like I'm because it just seems out of character. I'm like, yeah, I know Wolverine and Cyclops are they they can put their differences aside and work together like uh, what Matt, uh, um, Matt Rosenberg did right before uh, the that, you know, the Hickman took took over the book. He had Wolverine and, and Cyclops rebuilding the X-Men. And I actually liked some of that stuff. I thought it was good, especially that one big one shot. I think it was issue 11 and it was like a giant size issue. And it was just retold the, the, the history of Cyclops and Wolverine and how they've each gone bad and, you know, and found their way back to the X-Men. And I was like, that was really good. But I don't see them being intimate with each other based on that interaction. I see them as teammates and stuff. And I never saw intimacy enter the equation between those two. Uh, I think Ultimate Wolverine was uh, had a thing with Colossus, I think. I think they hooked up, but that's fine because that's they, they established that in the beginning and that's the Ultimate Universe. It's already established in this universe, but as we saw with Iceman and all these other things, it really doesn't matter. If people want characters to be uh, gay all of a sudden or into threesomes or whatever, like they just have them do it now and it doesn't really matter. So uh, so it's like, whatever, I don't know. It's, it's not a big deal, but it's just kind of one of those things. So I like that Ed Breeson poked fun at him and he's just like, hey, shouldn't you be having orgies on Krakoa right now? So yeah, Punisher clearly not giving a crap. <laughs> just kind of being like, you know, get you know, I, I've heard the rumors, get away from me or whatever. Like, uh, go, go back to where you belong. I'm gonna find the killer of this cop. Um, but you know, Wolverine's like, no, Castle, you know, if it's Danny, you and I know Danny, and we should go stop him together. So, of course, it's not Danny. It's Johnny, who's the Ghost Rider. So they find that out. Danny's the spirit of corruption now. And so when, uh, you know, when Frank Castle and Wolverine show up to, to question him, he turns into the spirit of corruption and beats the crap out of Wolverine and Frank Castle. He even stabs Frank Castle with the sword. and uh, But, you know, it doesn't kill Frank Castle because Frank Castle truly isn't corrupted. He may have a very extreme sense of morality and justice but there's nothing corrupt about it he's consistent he kills people who sin who are bad um and for the most part has not made any mistakes in that regard like he's doesn't uh, uh, you know oftentimes innocent lives aren't lost when frank castle is killing bad guys um he's usually tries to save people and does save people so it was pretty neat seeing him get stabbed with this giant sword and then the wound heal and he's actually not dead it just tried to drain the corruption out of him and they're just truly wasn't corruption in him and i thought that was neat i was like yeah that's a cool moment for these characters um but meanwhile while those guys were fighting dr strange shows up and he tries to he, he it was a cool moment he shows up and he says hey john he shows up to johnny blaze and he shows up and he's like hey johnny why why'd you take my prisoner because if you remember back in damnation the nick spencer donny kate storyline uh you know that's where this all started you had johnny blaze uh, get sent to hell he sacrificed his life to get sent to hell because Mephisto was captured on earth and they wanted to keep him there because they knew the longer he stayed on earth the more power he would lose and so someone had to sit on the throne and the earth's heroes were like maybe it should be Johnny Blaze because he has experience with being a ghost rider but he also um, could maybe bring some sense of normality or not normality I guess is the wrong way to say it but like maybe bring some form of less torture i guess to uh to hell and uh and it's only going to be temporary that's what they kept telling johnny but it wasn't temporary was it he's been down there for a long time as we saw in the one shot mother demons 
He's been down there for a long time because time works differently down there. So he, in his eyes, Dr. Strange has forgotten about him and he broke his deal because Dr. Strange said, go down there. It's going to be temporary. We're going to have Mephisto lose his powers up here. You'll be down there and then we'll find a way to get you out. And Johnny's like, why didn't you come get me? Like you lied to me. And, and you know, Strange is like, no, it, I was trying to come up with a way to, to get you, you know, and he's like, I just couldn't think of a way to do it without you know without uh disrupting everything he's like every possible timeline i saw where i came down and rescued you it led to chaos and i'm sure it's because strange saw this war that's coming and if lilith gets the throne lilith's goal isn't is to unite the kingdoms of the afterlife so she wants like she makes a deal with belasco and mother of demons and it looks like that's going to continue like she wants to unite limbo and hell and she also wants to you know unite other underworlds and as we find out from mephisto there are more than just hell and limbo and we know that from asgardian you know timeline they have their own version of hell um so it looks like there's multiple hells that are all somehow connected as we talked about in a previous episode because ed breeson teased that in like issue two or three of ghost rider we talked about that at the back of the issue or maybe it was even issue one at the back of the issue he kind of broke down the different versions of hell and where they exist in the multiverse and so if lilith does unite these kingdoms it will literally bring hell to every world in the multiverse. So yeah, that sounds pretty bad. That actually sounds a little bit worse than Null in, in my mind, because Null wants to come over and take over one world uh, with his power. This is about everything. So of course, escalation, right? You got you to gotta outdo the other writers. Uh, so Ed Breeson really stepping his game up here. So with that on the line, now the stakes have been revealed. You're like, okay, we definitely got to stop Lilith now, but we, we also can't let her kill Mephisto. Um, Mephisto had no, he knew the balance of things. So he, he was perfectly fine being in charge of hell and torturing demon souls and, and coming to earth and messing with humans. He liked that. But when you compare what he was doing, which was not good by any means, but when you compare what he was doing with what Lilith wants, he's like a kitty cat. Like you're almost kind of like, dang, dude, like we've had it good underneath Mephisto's existence. And that's saying something that hurts to say that as a Spider-Man fan, because obviously he ruined Spider-Man's life to an extent too. So, uh, so to me, I'm like, oh my God, this is, this is getting crazy. And I wonder now with, you know, Mephisto in their care, if maybe they'll tie into Spider-Man somehow. Like, I hope they do. I think that'd be cool. But um, so anyway, yeah, and the rest of these stories, you know, the, basically it's Punisher and, and, uh, and Wolverine fighting against Danny, and then they come to their senses, caretaker calms them all down, and then they all realize we got to go after Danny. So I was a little thrown off, because remember at the end of Mother of, he of Demons, you had Danny going, I'm going to get involved because Lilith, Lilith is involved, and I got to make sure she doesn't hurt Dan you know, uh, for Johnny. So that's why Danny you know, is like, all right, I'm not going to walk away from this battle. I'm going to go find and help Johnny. So that's what he's kind of on his way doing, except he stopped you know, to talk to his mom at the grave to try to find out where, you know, to, like I missed the times where I felt like you were talking to me from beyond the grave. If you can help me find Danny, if you can send me a sign, that's kind of what he's there to do. Um, and that's when Caretaker shows up and she's like, I'll help you find Johnny. And then Punisher shows up with Wolverine and then battle ensues. But now that they're all together, they're like, okay, we can go find Johnny. And meanwhile, Johnny is fighting, you know, he's trying to keep an eye on Mephisto, who he has chained up, but he's also fighting Doctor Strange. And Doctor Strange is teleporting them to different places. So it's kind of cool, like the Doctor Strange movie. So they're fighting in the snow and stuff like that. Then they end up in a city and they fight in a city. Uh, so, uh, but Johnny Blaze is not letting up. He hates that Strange has lied. And, and, and he even says, he goes, no, you weren't trying to find a way out. Like if you read the Doctor Strange book, he's like, you made a deal with a demon too to get your hands back. And now you've been a regular doctor again. Um, and so you've, and you've been the Sorcerer Supreme. And so you have like both lives now. So you actually have less time to look for, you know, a way to get me free from hell. And he goes, so you're lying. Like you actually are lying to me right now. And so, and Mephisto points that out. Mephisto's like, he's lying, you know, like don't trust him. And so what we find out is that every time uh, Johnny has done the damnation stare on demons and reabsorb them and send them back to hell, a little bit of those demons have stayed inside of him. So that's why he's becoming more corrupt. This is part of the deal of being the devil. Whenever you send a demon back to hell, a part of them stays with you and it corrupts you a little bit more. So Mephisto is distant, being distanced from his corruption. He's actually, you know, I imagine in a matter of time will be able to be a good person. He even says that. He says, you know, the way to really torture a demon, you don't just send them right back to hell, Johnny. You let them enjoy life on earth for a while. You let them fall in love. He's like, because the more demons are on earth, you know, over time, they'll be less corrupted. 
and they'll still do evil things for a while, but then they'll start seeing the errors. They'll feel guilt. They'll feel remorse. And then they'll fall in love and they'll become, they'll feel like they'll pretend they're human and they'll fall in love with somebody and they'll have kids and they'll have a good life. And then that's when you come and grab them and drag them back to hell because now they've been away from the corruption and they've become essentially better people for being on earth. And he goes, and that's why I hate earth. He goes, the longer you're here, without my help to corrupt you and without hell, you know, intervening, you all will just be better people. And he goes, you know, like Adam and Eve and stuff, without us, without us telling them to bite, you know, bite the apple, you, on your own, you're going to find your way to goodness again. And we can't have that. So hell's got to constantly be involved. And so you let these demons on earth, you let them become like humans and become good. And then you drag them back to hell. That's how you torture them. And Johnny's like, I'm not like you. I'm, that sounds cruel and, and you know evil. And he goes, it is, but you're the king of hell. You got to do that now. And he's like, no, I'm just going to send them right back to hell where they belong, you know, and I'm not going to let them have a taste of that life. So, uh, so yeah, you have that. And so because they're fighting, you have Lilith, they have, uh, they captured the orb, the villain with the big eyeball. Um, and I think he was even had the watcher's eyeball at one point. So they have him captured and they're using him to see what's happening on earth. And Lil Lilith has three triplet daughter type characters. Uh, one of them's called Helvira, which is awesome. It's a great name. And, uh, she sends them out under earth to, um, do her bidding so two of them go to new york to do whatever is going to happen i imagine next in upcoming issues and then one of them goes and watches the battle with strange and everything so then when strange is fighting johnny and mephisto's there uh ghost rider uh, shows up or not ghost rider ghost rider's already there he's fighting uh doc strange but uh the spirit of corruption shows up danny ketch along with caretaker uh frank castle and wolverine so the four of them show up and they're joining in the fight and they're like we got to protect mephisto we can't let lilith and her forces because she sends a bunch of demons into the battle to kill johnny and mephisto so that way she can now she's like this is my one opportunity they're using the orb to see all of it and they're like let's just send demons in. So they send every demon they have in New York, uh, which is a ton, uh, they send them to fight. And what's cool is there's this moment where Punisher is killing demons and he's protecting Mephisto. And Mephisto goes, Frank Castle. And he goes, Frank Castle. And he goes, you know, you'd make a good ghost rider. <laughs> and I was like, that's great. That's Ed Breeson like uh, hinting at cosmic ghost rider, obviously. So I thought that was really cool. I was like, hey, that's a really good moment. Uh, that's pretty cool. And actually, if you read um, one of the recent cosmic ghost rider miniseries, in issue one, there's a backup story written by Donnie Cates where Frank Castle actually meets Cosmic Ghost Rider um, at the gravesite of his dead family. So, uh, so yeah, I thought, and I actually thought that was a really good little uh, story that they did there too. So Frank kind of probably gets that reference now, which is pretty cool. So yeah, I, I thought that was neat. And then so you have Caretaker and uh, Wolverine; they're all fighting demons, and and you know, along with. Frank Castle. There's keeping Mephisto alive while Johnny and uh, Danny fight. So now Danny, um, now that Doctor Strange has been knocked out or knocked out of the picture, he's helping the other heroes keep off the demons and little of his force, uh, forces. And then you have Danny and Johnny going toe to toe in their rematch. And then of course, you know, Johnny's like, I took the power away. You didn't want to be Ghost Rider. I took it away from you. And now you're this, what the hell is this? And he's like, I'm the spirit of corruption. I'm from limbo. And he goes, and I didn't want to do this. He goes, I was sent and I was kind of tricked into becoming this, but apparently I need to be this to save you. And he goes, so, I, you know, yes, I don't want to be Ghost Rider. No, I don't want this power. No, I don't want any of this life, but I also don't want my brother, you know, anything bad to happen to my brother. And he goes, so I'm here to save you, you stupid idiot. So he does, he grabs a sword, he stabs Johnny, and he makes Johnny realize that he's been corrupted by all the, you know, damnation stairs he's been doing. So it purges uh, Johnny of all the corruption and the corrupted souls and demon souls that are in him sends them all back to hell and it completely makes Johnny back to a normal ghost rider. He's not back to normal, but he's now a normal ghost rider and he's not per, you know persuaded by the powers and evilness and corruption of the others. And while all this is going on, Blackheart has found his way back to Earth. He's the son of Mephisto, obviously. And, uh, and in the original Army of Darkness, that's what he wanted. He wanted the heroes of, you know, Frank Castle, Wolverine, and Ghost Rider. He wanted them to kill, help him kill Mephisto so he could become the king of hell, you know, because he's the prince of hell and he wants to become the king of hell. So now Blackheart's in the picture and he grabs Emma, the woman who works at Danny's bar, and Stacy, uh, Danny's ex-wife, and he corrupts them, uh, I mean, you know, and he basically brings them on to his side um, and he uses them, he's going to use them as bait. So as this story wraps up and, you know, Danny actually saves Johnny and everything goes back to normal, you know, Johnny had says, hey, you know what, I I'm sorry, and, uh, you know, I'm sorry, Frank, your friend who was a cop, he was a demon. 
and I'm, I'm sorry, I, you know, I had to kill him. And they even prove he's a demon by putting a coin that was like blessed by like a thousand nuns that caretaker has. Pretty cool stuff. Reminds me of Supernatural a lot. And they put the coin on his head and it reveals the dead body to be a demon. So Frank, so he tells Frank, I'm sorry about your friend. You know, I didn't want to kill him, but he wasn't human anymore. A demon took over and Frank's like, I know. And he's like, and Wolverine, thank you for getting involved and, you know, helping Danny uh, and making sure the kid was safe, you know, and, and, you know, Wolverine's like, of course, this kid, you know, we've been through a lot together from the brood to everything else. You know, he's like, I, I, I look after this kid. And I was like, that's cool. That's a great, you know, relationship there uh, between those two. And so, and then Danny, he's like, I'm sorry you had to become this thing, this entity and go to limbo to fight back at me. I'm sorry you had to do that. He's like, it shouldn't have come to that but I'm glad you did because now I see things clearly now and strange. I'm sorry for all the things I did to you. I have one more thing to do, but there is a battle coming. And now that I can see clearly, I know what's being worked on. So let me take Mephisto. I've heard some of his ramblings. We're going to go get some answers. And then when I come back, you know, uh, we're going to fight. So I need you guys to be ready when I come back. And they're like, okay, you know, we'll be here. And so I hope that's the case. I hope when, you know, he comes back, there's Frank Castle, there's Wolverine, Doctor Strange, Caretaker, you know, I hope there's other characters too. I hope they bring in a couple other, um, you know, supernatural characters and stuff. That would be pretty, pretty fun. Uh, so then anyway, so after that battle, you know, D uh, Danny and Caretaker, they go back to his bar and they're like, all right, let's go and get a game plan going and we'll start preparing. And, you know, maybe I need to train and you learn how to use this power better um, because if there is a war coming we need to be ready to fight it and then of course when they come into the bar they see Blackheart there and he has the place taken over he's got Emma and he's got Stacy and he's like hello Danny Ketch he goes uh, so I understand you're the spirit of corruption now and he goes I'm gonna need you and your powers and caretaker and Johnny Blaze uh, we're gonna kill my father and we're gonna kill Lilith and everybody else and I'm gonna become the new king of hell. <laughs> so, so uh, again, just everyone fighting for that throne. So that's where it's gonna continue. And he says, and if you want Stacy and Emma to live, you're gonna do exactly as I say. So it looks like there's gonna be some blackmail involved here too. So I'm, cur I'm curious to see where this goes. I think Ed Breeson is doing a great job. Uh, Juan Frigari, he's the artist of these three issues and he does a great job. I mean, I, Aaron Cooter, I think comes in in issue seven. So we get Aaron Cooter, who was the, I think, original artist on the book. He comes back. I wish for Gary would have just drawn all three of these just for the consistency because it's one story, but it is cool to see Cooter back and hopefully he's going to draw the next issue and we'll be getting that next issue very soon. So that's why I wanted to catch up on these. So I got some collection videos recorded today, got some reviews for you, Mother of Demons and these. So, uh, you know, what you think of these five, uh, these you know, issues, five, six and seven, these three issues, what do you think of them? If you read them yourself, if you haven't, you know, there is some stuff I left out because I hope you guys go read the, the books yourselves. But this was fun. I thought there was some, I thought Breeson did some cool digs to what other writers are doing, you know, Cosmic Ghost Rider, X-Men, stuff like that. So I like, I like those moments um, for sure because they're like totally, you know, fanboy kind of uh, digs at other writers. So if you're reading the greater Marvel Universe, you kind of know all this, even with Doctor Strange when he says, no, I try to help you, uh, Johnny. I try to help you get out of hell. It's, and then you're like, no, if you read your main book, you made a deal with a demon. And then so when Johnny finds out, he's like, you made a deal with a demon? So you haven't been help trying to find a, find a way out for me? Uh, and so I love that. So I was like, oh, that's cool. Like Ed Breeson is completely aware of what's happening in the other books. And that is unlike what I see other writers do. I feel like Jonathan Hickman comes in with X-Men and he's kind of like, I don't, you know, whatever's happening in other books doesn't matter. They have to conform to what's happening in my book. And, uh, and that's what it feels like. I don't know if that's his, his intention or not, but that's what it feels like. So so I don't really like that too much. Um, but, and same with Donnie Cates. I feel like, especially with Absolute Carnage, like with Salad and Ahmed doing on the uh, Miles Morales miniseries, it just didn't feel like him and Donnie were communicating at all to get you know things happening in one book to the other. But here it seems like Ed Breeson is actively, at least maybe, or his editors are, someone is doing their job and they're hearing and reading about what's happening in other books and they're implementing all that in this book. And I like that. I think that's very good. Makes him a great writer and makes him one of the best writers, I think, that are at Marvel right now. Because I loved his Old Man Logan run that he did after Jeff Lemire. I thought he saved that book. And I think that book only lasted 50 issues because Ed Breeson came on that book. And I like some of the other stuff he's done at Marvel. And I think between him and Chip Zdarsky, I think they're two of my favorite writers at Marvel right now. And, and I think they're tackling characters that are hard to get good runs on. I mean, like Daredevil is a great character, but, you know, after Bendis, there's been a couple moments here and there where he's had some good stuff happen to him. But to me, I think Bendis had the last really great run on Daredevil. But Chip Zdarsky's run, I think, is even better than that. And that was a good run. And I know I'm down on Bendis sometimes, but 
I think what Zdarsky's doing is great. And here with Breeson with Ghost Rider, it's been a while since we've had a solid Ghost Rider run. Like I liked the, uh, you know, the stuff with the kid, you know, who, who drives the car. Um, uh, Gabe, uh, Gabriel Luna plays him in the in the show, uh, but his name is uh, Robbie Reyes uh, in the comic. And uh, so, yeah, I'm just trying to piece all together also. So I like the stuff they did with Robbie Reyes. That was cool. Um, I don't really like a lot of the stuff they're doing with Robbie in Avengers right now. I think it's cool that he's in the Avengers, but I'm just not really digging everything Jason Aaron's doing. But having a run like this, we're only like seven issues in and I'm digging this and there's a plan here and there's a big, you know, event coming up or whatever. I hope it stays contained to Ghost Rider type books, maybe crossover with a Doctor Strange book or something. That'd be cool, but uh, kind of reminiscent of the 90s. But if it just stays self-contained in Ghost Rider, that's fine too. And I think what Breeson's doing here is smart and I dig it. So if you feel the same or if you feel different, let me know down in the comments below. And as always, we'll continue our conversation down there. And hopefully you saw some digital codes. I threw some up. I think I had uh, issue, uh, one for issues five, six, and seven, and maybe a, a spare for issue five. I think I had two copies because I have the variant cover of it too, which is that over here? Yes, it is. Yeah, I have the variant cover for issue five. It has the spirit of corruption and the spirit of vengeance on it <laughs> to Ghost Rider and Danny, uh, Johnny and Danny. So I, I wanted this cover, so I, I didn't originally pick this cover. Uh, this was when I was at um, House of Secrets in LA before I left LA. This was one of the last comics that was held for me and he held me a variant. He was like, hey man, I know you like Ghost Rider. I held a variant for you. It was our last one. So I bought it because I was like, hey, you, you held it for me? I'll buy it. So hopefully you got all those codes. If you got the codes, let me know down below who got them so I know who got what books and so other people know so they know what codes are still available. But if you got them all, whatever, that's fine too. Let me know down in the comments below and we'll talk about it down there. So congratulations everyone who got the codes and because uh, they're only one time. So once you put the code in, that's it. That's how it works. And it, so once they're used, that's it. You know, only one person can get them. But I'll try to get, you know, as more Ghost Rider issues come out, I'll buy them, and if they have codes in them, I'll share them with you guys on every episode, so there'll be more times to win coming up very soon. So thank you guys so much for watching the show. As always, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff, and I'll see you in hell. Peace.